After so many years in trading, I'm really convinced that traders do a few things that cause them to blow their account or cause them to have a tough time and then they quit and not come back trading afterward. The thing is, if you just learn a couple of things that will make a difference, you can actually not blow up your account, you can get good results instead. And it could change your whole trading career. Now, it's kind of hard to learn these things sometimes. There's a lot of things that people learn too late in their trading. And this video will talk about these exact things that people learn too late. Some things that will teach you right now that will make a big difference in your results, I believe. So we'll ring on Michael Thomas. It will teach you five things that most traders learn too late that you should learn right now. And it's gonna give you all the tips for free. So let's dive right in. Okay, so we're having a little fun here, but we really, especially for you developing traders who are sort of got the bug, but you just really haven't got that traction yet. These are really important lessons from successful traders who just wish they had done things differently in the past. So, you know, take note of this and I'm kind of going to pick my five here that are not just necessarily your sort of normal, you know, top five things that successful traders do. You can go to plenty of other channels for that. I'm going to give you extra value here. And the fifth one, maybe a little controversial and really want to, I want to hear your ideas and your thoughts on which ones that really sort of, uh, you know, you're struggling with or ones that maybe you have overcome. So it'd be great to have a, to have a little conversation down in the chat in the comments. Okay. So let's go to the first one. So for the traders that I coach and ones that are sort of on their way, they all tell me they wish they knew that indicators aren't the holy grail. Newsflash, right? Haven't we all experienced that in the past? If they look so right and so good, you know, stochastics low and they turn up, oh, go long. And then when they go the other way, sell, you know, close and then go short. And we've all done that. Okay. We've all done that. And these indicators are part of packages, part of software packages that are mostly free. Well, a lot of times you get what you pay for. I mean, it's just normal. But what is interesting is, and, and these sort of indicators aren't all that bad. I think personally, and we could have a conversation about this too, is I think the problem is what they're called. They're called indicators because they're implying that they will sort of infer future price movement. And that's exactly what they don't do. Okay. But they can be great tools. So let's call them tools, all right? And let's call our brokers and say, hey, change your platform word to tools that they will help you sort of create a narrative or even act as a filter. I use them all the time for filters to kind of weed out so I can only have my, say, A or A plus setups. So from now on, let's stop calling them indicators, all right? And they're not the holy grail. And let's start using them as tools to help sort of refine and improve that edge that you have uh, in your trading strategy. All right. So that's the first one. Indicators that aren't the holy grail. What a shocker. Let's go to number two. Okay. So I see this all the time when I do trade journal reviews and even from the pros. It's that overestimating of price randomness. That's a lot to chew on. All right. Hope we could fit that all on the bottom. But here's my point is we place risk management tools and we have them and it's great. Glad everybody's using them. But when you play stops or give up on a trade within a price range that is normal market random behavior, you're really act placing it like a sitting duck sitting there just waiting to get stopped out. All right. Mark Douglas, phenomenal, you know, trading the zone. You know, most of you have probably read it, but it really does a deep dive, not just on market randomness, but why that is such a thing that we need to be concerned with as traders. And early traders wish, you know, most of them I know have learned that, boy, I wish I learned more about accepting randomness as a tool and maybe keeping my trade in the game before that randomness takes hit. Again, it's like a sitting duck and you know, we all want risk management and people think like, you know, tight stops is risk management, but and we'll talk about that in a second, but really it's giving up on a trade outside the normal parameters of normal trading market activity, all right? That's really the secret to this whole thing. Staying away from the noise, let the noise do its thing and then if price goes outside that noise and pinches you, and that's really just good protection. So that was one sort of caveat that I think a lot of the traders 
respond, or at least my response in doing trade audit, audit reviews is keeping away or understanding more about the power of market price behavior and market randomness. Let's go to number three. All right, so this one's sort of near and dear to my heart. It's misinterpreting or misunderstanding really what risk management is all about. And I'll even add the scope of risk management. Ask most traders, go on YouTube, get all the information you need, and they really focus on the stop placement, all right, reducing trade risk. As a risk professional, this cannot be more far from the truth. Individual trades matter, but it's really the destination, the journey, the whole big picture of your risk management that really is what RM is all about. The five steps of the risk management process, identification, assessment, and control. Identifying the issues that you have that aren't get you getting you over the edge. Assessing the impact of your decisions that you make and then putting risk controls in place to overcome that. Managing and monitoring, obviously, that process through journaling, coaching, audits, things like that. Um, that's you know the four and five of the risk management process. As you can see, it's a lot more to it than just stop placement. In fact, the focus on stop placement really is this killer. And for most traders, I would recommend that learn this early. Learn about the principles of risk management in the trading business and really at the portfolio level. Is the plan that you have in place going to get you on a journey to where you want to go? Does that really matter if your stop is 20 pips away or 25? Probably not. So take a wider scope, an enterprise risk approach towards risk management. That is something that I wish a lot of traders learned earlier in their journey. Okay, number four. And this is sort of hits a nerve as well, I'm hoping. Again, place your comments below if this has ever affected you. But during the initial stage in that journey where you learned all your lessons, how did size play a role and impact in those hiccups? Probably most of the time. Sizing and the inappropriate use of size in trades can kill you. It increases your risk of ruin. So really, the principle here is un getting a better understanding early about the concept of risk of ruin, the importance of risk of ruin, and the critical element of solvency. You know, one thing about this game is you can have all the skill sets, learn, develop, but it's really capital is like a ticket to a show. You need the capital to play the game. Now, we have a lot of opportunities to go get outside capital these days, much uh, more opportunities than when I first started out, where it pretty much was, you know, save, beg, and, you know, been plead not to, uh, you know, scrimp on, on, on capital and, and devote that much to it. And I made a lot of sacrifices. Those principles still apply, but there are outside ways, obviously, to, to get outside capital to trade. But here's the thing. The risk of ruin element doesn't go away. All right. You don't want to throw $40 or something into a challenge and blow it and then try again. Okay, fine. It's the gamification. But that risk of ruin element is the cesspool. It's the catalyst of the cesspool of why traders end up, good traders, potentially good traders, end up in the trader graveyard. Okay. Understanding the principles of risk of ruin and how does that get impacted and how does some good traders end up in the sort of area of disappointment, that is because they put their size too high. They were thinking more about how much can I make per day, per week, and not worrying, not really focusing on the principles of solid trading and solid risk management discipline and everything that you need to do to execute your plan effectively. So the thing, number four, what you should have learned or what really, if you're a newer trader, Take this advice now and looking back for those traders who probably should have changed their sizing or anyone who's blown an account, sizing kills. Size kills. Keep it small. Learn. Develop. Remember, those $20 winners are going to be $200, $2,000 winners down the road. Don't blow your account and don't end up in the trader graveyard. Okay, so number five. This is one that I kind of sneaked in there because I think it was really important and you really don't hear too much about this on, you know, in YouTube education and, and on, you know, financial news and things like that. 
But the key element that traders wish they had learned earlier or wish I wish they had learned earlier as a coach is their definition of what a trader is. All right. Throughout the whole journey, most traders think, Okay, I trade, I buy something long, I want it to go from here to here, you know, higher to lower, and you know, vice versa. Okay. We are not in the game of prediction. That is not our job as a trader. Our job is a math equation. We're just taking a plan that has historically given us a positive edge or positive variance, and we're just repeating those steps in the attempt to get the same result. That's all we're doing. My predictive trades over my career, tops 50-50. The monkey throwing the dart probably would have beat me. Okay, If I had the news that was coming out tomorrow tomorrow, or earnings, right, the results, I probably still wouldn't trade it effectively because the markets can move based on other things, not just the earnings, but maybe, you know, the guidance for the next quarter or things like that. So, understanding that what traders wish they had known is the definition of what a trader does. And really, the best traders, that's what they do. They're executing a plan that has an historical variance. Are there noise and things that happen or you know, adjustments that are made in the markets? Absolutely. I mean, this is what you know, long-term vision and development of a trader is all about. But think about, and for those traders that are just developing, stop being looking at this as someone who needs to predict movement. Your job as a trader is to execute a plan. And if it has a positive expectancy and you execute that plan with efficiency and quality and the way it's designed to do, you will be successful. The math dictates that you will be successful. So kind of rethink about this and change your definition. I want to hear your comments as well. And, uh, you know, this is not something I don't think I've maybe ever communicated before, you know, on YouTube or even in my, uh, you know, formal trainings. But I want you to redefine yourself as a trader. You are a project manager trying to execute a plan. That's it. Okay? Don't worry about Tesla's earnings or they got a new car or the Fed's going to go this way. Or yeah, I'm telling you, 50-50 at best. And if you could do it better and you're great and you're the outlier, go for it. I mean, you know, there's, there's always an entrepreneur outlier out there, and I, I love to work with them as well. So think about that. You're re definition of a trader, remind yourself every day before the market opens, take five seconds, 10 seconds and say, I am no longer a trader trying to predict markets. I'm just a project manager trying to execute a plan. All right. So let's wrap this up. Okay. So number one, indicators as a tool, not as a predictor of price movement. Okay. Let's get that. Number two, get an average price of price movement and place your stop outside of that. All right. If you have to reduce size, think about that as well. Okay. Once you get caught in that randomness and you can do tests and back tests, say, how much does this particular market move, you know, every five minute candle or around the daily or something? All right. Try to look at giving up on your trade, whether it's a stop or, or whatever you have to do on that is, you know, outside of that range because the randomness, you just act like a sitting duck and taking advantage of you know, your stop. And that's uh, something we don't want to do. All right. Death by a thousand cuts. Number three, learn the math behind your strategy, right? When it does this, I have an X percentage of being successful, right? So again, we're just going to do that. We're going to do an if then type of math statement, math equation. When it does this, I do that, right? When price goes inside yesterday's range, VWAP's my target because it does it 64% of the time. Hopefully you Take that as you will. All right. Number four, trade small during development. Understand the importance of risk of ruin. It's so, so important. We don't want you falling into that valley of disappointment, all right? Because we all have high expectations, especially, you know, newer as a trader, but you don't want to end up in that sort of graveyard where you just quit, all right? So that's, uh, you know, not good. The outcome obviously is 0% success right there. So we don't want that to happen either. So, Trade small during development. So, so, so important. Those $20 wins will be $200 wins before you know it. Okay, number five, we just talked about it. Redefine your definition as a trader, which is here executing a plan with a positive expectancy and anticipating that positive expectancy 
to carry over if we just execute our plan effectively. That's it. That's what we do as traders. If you learn these five principles, and if you're new as a trader, now you have an opportunity to learn without making all those mistakes that we all did. And believe me, I made them all. All right. I hope this is of value. Let me hear your comments. Which one sort of resonated with you and which ones, be honest, kind of kind of hurt a little bit. OK, I think three or f- out of the five really pinched me when I was young. All right. And I started out and that's a while back. But I've learned those lessons, paid the price. And now hopefully you could learn them without doing any damage to your account. Now, before I go, click on the link below. There's an oldie but goodie where I talk about these principles of risk management and really widen the scope. It's not just about stops. And we'll take a look and walk you through those steps, the five steps of the risk management process, and really give you a better idea to help you and understand the principles of portfolio risk management, enterprise risk management, and not just about those stupid little stops. All right, click on the link below and we'll see you next time.